the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Raiders and the Colts, and it's coming up next on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Uh, Charles, the Colts coming off a tough year, just four wins in 2022. Do you think that they can compete this year in the AFC South? I do, because I think it's a wide open division, brand new head coach, brand new way of doing things, likely a brand new quarterback, and a defense that I think is a little bit on the underrated side. So yes, absolutely, I think they can compete in their division. And then for the Raiders, this is a tough team to figure out. They stumbled home to a 6-11 finish last year. But you say if they want to turn things around, it has to start on the defensive end. It certainly does. While they've had some dynamic pass rushers along the way, they've needed more. They've added them now in free agency and the draft, as well as some new faces on the back end to help shut down people throwing the football. Sanchez ready to go and we are underway from Lucas Oil Stadium and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line so here comes the Raider offense now onto the field bringing them out is the pocket passer from Purdue rookie Aiden O'Connell for every rookie prospect there are always nerves involved in this moment running your team out to start a game but there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. Off the play fake, here's O'Connell. And incomplete to open things up. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing, O'Connell. He gets this to Devontae Adams. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. So, Charles, yeah, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league. But I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. And don't forget, you're gonna throw a couple extra rushers at him as well. See if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. On second down, O'Connell. Short throw, and that's hauled in by Mayer. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to bring up third and two. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Trying to run for it with Jacobs. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. So on fourth down, here's A.J. Cole to punt for the Raiders. A deep to return is Josh Downs. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. 
The Colts offense set to go to work, and they're led by a guy who's bounced around a bit the last few years, hoping to find a home with Indianapolis, Gardner Minshew. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball, run it inside, everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. Boy, that was pretty. Sidestepping defenders on his way to a pickup of nine yards. That first down run could not have turned out worse for a defense because when they came out on the field, their number one mission, keep them stacked up close to their goal line and at worst, create great field position for their offense. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he'll go out of bounds, looks like right at the 15. Well, a gain of five, good enough for the first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So the completion good for seven there, and it'll be second down. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on, because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. On second down, it's Taylor. And this is going to be a Colts first down as he'll take this forward to the 27. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little, little bit of power and you find a way to pick up first downs. Throwing on first down is Minshew. That one finds Pierce right side. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Their first possession of the game, and they're already going after double coverage. That's a nice completion that can set the tone for things to come if they're able to keep finding ways to beat with the defense is throwing at them. They look like they're confident that they can get it done. Divine Diablo dropping him behind the line of scrimmage. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Here's Minshew. And that one too wide and incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On fourth down, the Colts will call on Rigoberto Sanchez for the punt. DeAndre Carter back deep. Thirty-nine yard punt, six yards on the return, and the Raiders will take over now. First and ten. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. From the thirty-four, now here's first and ten. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Second down, Jacobs once more. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give him a cutback lane. On each play, you have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They played that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. 
trouble, and he's taken down. Samson Abuka in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big-time sack. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. First and 10, Taylor now. First by him near the 35. And this is going to be a Colts first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Minshew, first and 10. That's caught, it's Josh Downs. And he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. That was a good illustration of setting the edge as a defensive end, being able to make sure that you stay on your feet no matter what type of block, and you're not going to get pushed inside, stayed home, skated to the outside, and made the play. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders 40. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory, right at the 40. Minshew sets to throw. And down he goes, brought down a Raider sack. Multiple defenders there to drop him for a loss of four. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I could dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. Now an option play on second down. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Now Minshew. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Alec Pierce, 43 yards. And the Colts get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown.
And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. It's Jacobs to start the drive. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Someone's looking fresh, and his O line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. Now it's O'Connell. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Throwing on third, O'Connell. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? Here's Jacobs on first and ten. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Play action. Now Connell. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Partner, I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage. But on that play, they held up quite well. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the shotgun, O'Connell. He throws there incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. I think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder. Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. Here's A.J. Cole now to punt this one away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. And they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Back to Taylor on first down. Oh, able to avoid him. And he'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession as they are looking at a second down and six coming up.
They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. That is caught. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. To the right side, this is Taylor. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Max Crosby showing his strength and quickness there, a loss of four. Well, obviously the pass rush gets the glory and the statistics on this play, but the coverage, they deserve a ton of credit too. Denied open windows, erased the quarterback's targets one by one. Everywhere he looked, someone was covered. Only a matter of time before someone got there to bring him down. Able to find the open man, that's complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The teams practice their plays during the week. They're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day, so it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game, and they hit that one there for big yardage. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Looking metal, and it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Out of the gun is Minshew. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Good coverage yet again down here by the goal line. Everyone's blanketed, and he's forced to throw it away and try and come up with something on third down. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. It'll be Minshew again. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor from eight yards out. And the Colts go up by two touchdowns. Well, he wasn't the guy they were initially going for, but after going through the progressions, it worked. When you have plenty of people who can catch the football, you don't always have to go to your primary target, and sometimes that target is actually covered. Nice job coming off of that and getting it to someone who was open. Yeah, the man out of the backfield gets in for the score. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Here's Carter now on the return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. 
And they're in a bind early here, down 14 nothing. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of the defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were. And you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. First down throw, O'Connell. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Jacoby Myers, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. Fights through and now a crease. Still on his feet. Inside the 10. And he will score. Touchdown, Las Vegas. Josh Jacobs, 65 yards. And the Raiders have got it back to within a score. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over. This game could be 88 and out the gate early. What? 88 and out the gate? Yeah. What's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. It usually meant that thing's done. Well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 and out the gate. We still got a good game going ahead of us. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that'll make our score 14 to 7. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Well, they were setting up the screen CD, a lot of free runners, and they got there late, and the penalty ensued. Yeah, somehow it didn't get into their brains that it was a screen, right? Instead of pulling off and chasing the ball downfield, they kept going towards the quarterback and knocked him down way late. That draws the penalty flag each and every time. Running straight ahead, Taylor. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. From just shy of midfield, here's second down and two. They'll go play action here with Minshew. Blitz coming and down he goes. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. And down he goes again, a bevy of sacks in less than a half, but this defense is still losing the game. They've got to fix something because there should be no excuse for losing with an effort like this on that side of the ball. They need to take advantage when their defense is generating this kind of pressure so early in the game. This offense so far on third down, they have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third down and 12. And he'll find Pittman. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. 
version. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Now Minshew on first and ten. And down he goes. Brought down a Raider sack. Jerry Tillery running in there and setting him down. Well, Charles, this has been something to watch so far. This is where you really feel for a quarterback. He's been running for his life in this first half. Brandon, that's five sacks already, so you know he's got to be saying, can we get some more guys in here to block, please? Because if we don't, we're going to need another quarterback. They come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. Mitch, you're going to try and run. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw a defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. To the sideline and incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown on their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Raider drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and 10. Fakes the handoff. Now O'Connell to throw. And a quick throw there is incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Jacobs going to try the middle. And he'll use his blockers to get this up over the 20 to the 21. 90 yards rushing for him now to this point. But well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. On third down, here comes Jacobs. And this is going to be a Raiders first down as the tackle made at the 26-yard line. And now a stoppage. It looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Once again, it's Jacobs. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Jacobs. Good footwork at the 30. And he powers his way up past the 30. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. O'Connell working from the gun. Job done in the secondary and swat that one away. 
Here's A.J. Cole now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Fielded just inside the 20. It's a net of 40 there, a punt of 48, and a return of eight. And they will take over first and 10. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Minshew's throw caught by Pierce. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time, but it's right on the money on the right sideline. But Josh McDaniels, he had his mind made up on that one. He disagrees, and he'll throw the challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll get about three here up to the 44-yard line. Third and five. He'll look to throw. He finds Pierce, it's complete. And he's gonna have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders 30. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 30-yard line. He'll look to throw. Delivers another one to Pierce. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter. 14 to 7. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Throw taken in by Taylor, left side. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right, not to be. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Here's Minshew. And this is going to be incomplete. The Raider defense strong on that one in coverage, and now it's fourth. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. 
stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. And Gay knocks this one through, and they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to seven. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? Has a different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. O'Connell looking to throw on first. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. Jacobs from the gun. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 115 yards on the ground here for Jacobs, so this is a first down. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. Over the middle, complete. It's Jacobs. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Second down in a yard. Throwing, O'Connell. Catch is made by Hunter Renfro. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. First and ten, it's O'Connell. Throw out wide is incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now O'Connell. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. I tell you what, that's a bedroom play for a guy this first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. 
And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So, yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. So time enough for a kickoff here. Five seconds remaining in this first half. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half for the well-traveled quarterback, Gardner Minshew. He fired his guys into the lead with two first half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. One touchdown is the difference. 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. He's got daylight. Room to run at the 50. And he will take this one all the way back inside the 35-yard line. Well, this has been a close game throughout, but that return can help them gain the separation that they've been seeking throughout the game. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. And they got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. On second down, Minshew. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And that'll make it third down. Minshew sets to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. Gay's kick is good. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So the big return had him fired up, but in the end, the offense stalls out. They only muster three. Yeah, the excitement was there after the return, but they didn't move the ball at all after that. They didn't even get a first down.
The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get involved in the end zone. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. After another impressive run, the question has to be asked, how do you slow these guys down running the football? I think they're going to try and get more people to the point of attack, try and get more people to the line of scrimmage, almost use a variety of run blitzes in order to try and get it done. Off the play fake, here's O'Connell. And that went to the right side and incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Trying to run for it with Jacobs. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a footer so short. Here's A.J. Cole now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll start with a give to Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Now second and seven from the 23. They run once more with Taylor. And he's brought down, giving this one up to about the 35. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Second and nine. Now Minshew. Side here going to be incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. 
Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 40-yard punt, no return, and it'll be Raiders football first and 10. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. That time they're able to bottle him up, and he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage. But you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Throwing on second down. Here's O'Connell. Caught on the right side by Adams. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. O'Connell on first and ten. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. This rookie was already being tested as he tries to lead a comeback here in the second half. Now he's got to get some momentum back after that sack and a big loss. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. They will run the draw with Jacobs. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. 132 yards rushing for him now in the ballgame. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And O'Connell now to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. The key to any screenplay is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball but someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. They'll get this one complete there to Pittman. And they work this well upfield across the 45. What a play that turns out to be 36 yards. As we've seen over the years, offense coordinators will often ease their way into drive. Many of them don't want to risk a turnover, put their defense in a bad spot. But not in this case. Not at all. Forget about easing into it. They took a shot. It worked. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down.
from the 43 here second in a yard again it's Taylor and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Well, I would have figured after the nine-yard run on the previous play, getting one more yard wouldn't have been much of a problem. But apparently it was, and now it's third down. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20 yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And a short pickup to about the 25. From the 25, here's second down and seven. Here's O'Connell. Slant to Adams. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The quick slant, good for a first down, a gain of 12. Here's a handoff to Jacobs. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Offense actually plays an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass, but in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Second down. Jacobs once more. And not much room to speak of. He'll get about three up to the 41. <laughs> already and they're staring at a fifth barring a conversion here on third down work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete and he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this you have to think about your tight end and he comes through for him picking up the first down Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 47. On the handoff, this is Jacobs. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and eight. to throw here, O'Connell. And that's complete to Adams. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 30. That'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game, and he's got a first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. 
You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's Raider football here, but they're on the short side of the scoreboard right now as we begin the fourth. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And they'll come up on a second and seven from the 27. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They'll run right here with Jacobs. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. So a big one coming now for Daniel Carlson. He hit his first, this one from 38. Carlson able to put this one through, and that will tighten this one up a bit. Now a one-score game at 20 to 13. So they get the three. It was fourth and one, and I think you were doing what I was doing. I was looking down at the sideline. I'm not sure the offensive unit wanted the three. They wanted to go for it. But when have we ever seen a unit that didn't want to go for it in that situation, That's true. right? Sometimes it's just way more important to have the points on the board than to worry about any type of a gamble. After the made field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Colts football and Michael Pittman, helmet back on and ready to go. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. straight ahead Taylor and he'll get this one up to about the 39 here they'll come up now third and three looking to throw it Minshew He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 11 yards for number 11. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Quick slant caught by Pierce. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. 
And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on because right now, he has got the defense so much on their heels, got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy, and what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. From the 23, here's second and a couple. They'll set up a throw. He's got Granson, his tight end. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here, and just load up for it and see what happens. taken down. Malcolm Kuntz in there to record another sack and that is now six on the afternoon for this defensive unit. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack as a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. Call it a gain of three on the play. And now what we have here, a third and goal. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Off play action, it's Minshew. Got a man. Two touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. And that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. The Extra point by Gay is up and good. And a lead now up to 14. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So out come the Raiders. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 157 yards rushing for him now to this point. Here's second and three. Back to throw, O'Connell. Short throw, and that's hauled in by Mayer. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size, 
can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. O'Connell, the open man here, Renfro. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Now a give to Jenkins running right. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. you got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. O'Connell looking to throw yet again. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 47. Now it's O'Connell. Oh, the slant connects with Devontae Adams. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. First down throw, O'Connell. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. That is incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. Second and 10. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 18. 15 yards there on the catch and run. First down. And quickly they get to the line. Sticking to the air with O'Connell here. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Here's second and ten. Off the play fake, here's O'Connell. Oh, a heavy rush and down he goes. He certainly has, but in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. Uh, and pressure coming, and they got him once again. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. Oh, uh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now, and if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense and they've done so with ease so it's Raider football as we get you reset they come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy here we go this is fourth down they'll go for it O'Connell 
And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Raiders call on a nickel set here for third down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Throw out right, pulled in by Downs. Just a gain of a couple there. And that'll bring up fourth down. Barton, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt and the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. So now London down by two touchdowns, a minute 38 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Here's O'Connell. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. But they've certainly had trouble unlocking this defense through three and a half quarters. So I don't expect it to get any easier now. You know they're going to be sitting back and waiting on everything, and they force an incompletion there. They'll try again here, second and ten. O'Connell. Pass complete, it's Adams. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. O'Connell looking to throw on first. He has Mayer complete. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's second down. Fakes the handoff. Now O'Connell to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He's got a man complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Well, defensively there, you want to play it a little safe and keep the action in front of you, but you definitely aren't looking to give up plays like that. They still got the cushion of a two-score lead, but don't give them a freebie here in the final minute. To the air again with O'Connell. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. On second down, O'Connell. That's to the sideline and incomplete. 
Well, it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Now O'Connell. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Ah, this defense has been so stingy all game long. No reason to think it's suddenly going to open up now. They took their shot, but this, like many others, falls incomplete. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. One final shot. They'll look to throw. One last shot at the end zone. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just the week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, Tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.